Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It's good to be here. It's good to see you again this morning. Let's all stand as we sing Holy is the Lord. Welcome to First Baptist Church of uh, Williamsburg. We are very happy to have all of you with us today. Uh, if you are visiting, uh, we're especially glad to have you here today. And there are visitor cards available at all the main doors. Please pick one of those up. Take a few minutes to fill it in and drop it in the offering box located at the back of the sanctuary or in the offering plate as it comes around. Coming later this month on June the 26th at 7 p.m. is a church-wide ice cream social. If you can bring ice cream, homemade or store-bought, either one is fine, uh, please call the church office. Peace, by Peace Quilting is this Tuesday, June 7th at 10 a.m. in the basement sewing room. You do not have to be a seamstress to participate, so no matter your level of expertise, everyone is welcome. Uh, there will be a youth choir concert on Sunday, June the 12th. Special guests are the youth choir from First Baptist Church, Jackson, Tennessee. The meal will begin at 5 p.m., followed by the concert and worship service at 6 p.m. Foods for the meal must contain no uh, nuts due to food allergies, and everyone is invited. CBF Kentucky is hosting their Extreme Build June 13th through the 18th. 
Complete details on this event are available in today's uh, worship bulletin. If you are interested in helping, please see Pat Ramey or the missions committee. Do we have any birthday offerings for today? Any birthday offerings? Okay. Um, don't forget the prayer cards are at all of the main doors. Feel free to write a note. It means uh, a lot uh, to those people that are unable to come to church. And just simply drop them in the offering box or plate, and the church office will mail them. Um, also, if you haven't picked up a bulletin, those are also located at the entrances. So uh, be sure to pick one of those up for additional announcements. And before we begin our service, I would ask that you bow your heads uh, with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this church. Thank you for the congregation. Thank you for all the ways that you have blessed our lives. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to be with uh, the people of this state, the people of this nation, and the people of this world. Um, we've got a lot of issues locally uh, at the state level and, um, and all over the world. And, and we look to you for guidance to navigate some of these uh, difficult times and um, difficult uh, issues that we face. But we look to you, Lord, for your leadership and your guidance, and I pray that you would continue to provide that for us. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you would continue to bless um, this church, but also bless us as we transition, continue to bless our pastor search committee and those involved and i just thank you so much for all that you continue to do for us individually as a church and as a community and we look forward to the future with you lord in the lord's name i pray amen once upon a time there was a great wind, a mighty life-giving energy that breathed everything into existence, a power that moved along the waters of the deep, the Spirit of God. One day a group who loved God was praying and meeting, celebrating a Jewish feast with friends and family, unaware of what was going to happen. Heaven was about to pay a visit. A violent wind filled the room where they prayed. Tongues of fire descended, separated, and rested on each of them. The Spirit of God didn't just come near them, the Spirit filled them. And each one began to speak in a foreign language, the many languages of all the people who lived in Jerusalem. All those who passed by marveled at what they saw. How could it be that each one could hear their own native language at the same time? Some claimed it was miraculous. Others scoffed and called them drunk. But Peter stepped forward and boldly proclaimed the truth. What the scripture described long ago had now come to pass right before their eyes. I will pour out my spirit, the Lord told his people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Here was the moment. The power of God filled the faithful. The body of Christ rose up, alive and active, equipped and empowered to love God, to love others. The good news continues to be proclaimed. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And the best news is, for those who believe, the story never ends. Let's all stand together as we sing, I sing praises and as the deer.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather here today to bring glory to your name, we collect offerings here to spread the love and the joy of your life to us. Thank you for every blessing that you have ever given us. And um, Father, please bless this offering to your name, and please let us use it uh, for your benefit. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
see the deacons down front this morning. I might have to preach. I'll try not to preach over your heads. <laughs> and I'll try to be brief. Uh, it's Communion Sunday. And our text this morning is from Mark chapter 2, verses 13 through 22. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and the tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with the tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. There's something about eating a meal together that makes a difference. And during these couple of years that we have not been able to have fellowship meals at church, it has just really made a difference. And this Sunday is the first time we're doing communion in the traditional way in a couple of years. And we're going to try to figure it out and see if we can't do it without dropping a plate. Is that right? Amen. Um, 
Have you ever been to a all day singing and dinner on the ground? I like all day dinner and singing on the ground. Uh, some people call them potluck. It's interesting, some parts of the country call it pitch in. You just pitch in the food and you, you hope everything doesn't turn up potato salad and you have a meal together. And that makes a big, big difference. It's precious times of having conversations and eating together. What I'd like to say to you is that families who share table time are families that thrive. Research demonstrates many benefits of family meals, especially in protecting children and adolescents from negative high-risk behavior. There are benefits of the family table. Today I want to tell you what the survey says, what the research says regarding the benefits of table time. And it has positive things to say about our table time as a church as well. Regarding the benefits of the family table time, the research says, first of all, mealtimes impact all of our senses, the sight, the touch, the taste, the smell of food, as well as listening to family conversation. I can almost repeat verbatim some of the family conversations I've heard at meals years ago from my father, my uncles, uh, and of course, the women of the family. Family meals are, offer the opportunity to spend time together, to reconnect after a busy day, to communicate with, with and listen to each other, and to share values and ideas and problem solve. Jesus shared meals with all kinds of people. Everyone was welcome at Jesus' table. He found time to share all his senses. The sight, the touch, the taste, the smell of food, as well as listening to friends. It was, it was a time of listening to the heartaches and the hopes of a people uh, and a time to connect with his friends and share values. And so today in this meal we share it is a time for us to connect, a time to reconnect with one another, a time to listen to the hopes and dreams uh, and to be reminded that we are family. Family meals contribute to traditions that families have together. You might have a special food that you like at your family. Particularly special days have special foods. You might have a favorite place to eat for special occasions. You might have food that is unique to your family heritage. Jesus ate with his friends, and it is said of many leaders of his day uh, that, that they had a special prayer that they had during the meal time. So Jesus instituted this meal as a time to remember and a time for us as family. The meal we share today is not my meal. The meal we share today is not the deacon's meal though it has been prepared by the deacons. The meal we share today is the meal of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we are servants at the table, and we each come and share. Uh, regarding the family meal, the research says family meal provides structure for the day, allowing children to feel more secure and safe, knowing what to expect. They're permitted... Uh, they also permit parental monitoring <clears throat> of children's moods and behavior and activities. Uh, what about the meal Jesus shared with his friends? Many of his friends didn't feel connected in any way to God. They did not feel connected to the religious institutions and didn't feel safe and secure in the world in which they lived. Jesus sat with them and he welcomed them at the table. Can you imagine the sense of security and safety and feeling at home that they must have felt simply by sitting at the table with Jesus? I don't know about you, but in the world in which I live, I need a little, 
a little feeling of safety and security. And as we gather around this table, we can remind ourselves of the safety and security we feel in Jesus Christ. Regarding the benefits of the family table, the research says the family table is one of the very few places that children can observe their parents interact and negotiate and problem solve and express emotions. A child's world is mostly spent with peers and teachers and the family table gives them a chance to see how adults, their parents, interact and cooperate. And so it was. At the table with Jesus, we observe him providing with us a role model of just how God reacts to people. Out there in the world, you might feel unaccepted and unacceptable. The world out there is a cutthroat world in which people are highly competitive and don't care much who they harm. But at Jesus' table, we're equal. And we learn to interact with each other based on God's grace, not on our achievements. And so I say to you the words that are often said at the table in many churches. Anyone, wherever they are on the journey of faith, is welcome at Jesus' table. Have you ever been to a Wednesday night fellowship meal at a new church? Tables circled around. Each table is sort of a club. And we went to a new church and we were having a good old time at a table and a lady said to me in jest, well, you're not a member of this table yet. You're still on probation. <laughs> well, that was funny to her. And I chuckled. But it wasn't really funny. And, and what I would like to say to you this morning whether this is your first time at this congregation or your thousandth time, you're not on probation. Jesus invites you to the table. You are welcome. I say again, anyone, wherever you are on the journey of faith, is welcome at this table. Amen. Uh, I'm going to have a, a prayer, and then I'm going to come down here and have a prayer for the elements as we distribute them. So, so let's, uh, let's have a prayer at this time. God, as we approach your table, we remember how you ate with all kinds of people. And so we look forward to that heavenly banquet when you will have so many unlikely dinner guests. We will gather on that day with a great host of people, all of us ill-deserving, who've been saved by grace alone. Lord, we praise you for making us a part of your broken yet beloved family, for calling us, healing us, saving us, Thank you for eating and drinking and reclining and dining and fellowshipping and communing with the likes of us. May we become more like Levi, to be so changed by your love that we constantly throw banquets for our friends and outsiders. Turn our family gatherings into occasions where you're always filling the empty seat. Make our hearts more friendly to outsiders. May our hearts become like your heart, much more accommodating, unrushed, and joyful. It is in the name of Christ we ask it. Amen. We're going to have a prayer of blessing for the cup, and then we're going to distribute it 
If this is your first time here, you might want to know that we hold that. Uh, we distribute the bread first, and, but you hold that, and we all take it together. So may we pray. Lord, as we take this bread in a few moments, we remember that you are the bread of life. And so as we take this, we pray that it would feed our souls and nourish our hearts and give us sustenance to run the race before us. In Christ's name, amen. like Paul's version of how this first occurred. It's contained in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. It might be the earliest account, we're not sure, of the, the Lord's Supper. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. 
Do this in remembrance of me. And now a prayer for the cup. Lord, as we drink this cup, we remember that you are the giver of life. You are forgiveness. You bring peace to our souls. Your love flows within us. As we pour out this cup, we see your sacrifice poured out for us. We see the pain you suffered for us and the price you set for humanity. Bless this cup as it blesses us. I pray in Christ's name. Amen.
In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. At that first Lord's Supper, the scripture says they sang a hymn and went out. I'd like to make a comment before we sing a hymn. And that is, uh, we have done this in more the traditional Baptist way this morning. Uh, during this pandemic time, we've kind of brought our own to-go cups as we come in and we hold it and we do it by ourselves. But this, we have served each other. Deacons or servants to you? I serve the deacons. The deacons serve me. We all need to be served and we are all servants. That is only one of the pictures, of course, of the Lord's Supper. Uh, in a moment, uh, we're going to stand and sing a hymn of invitation, a hymn of commitment. Uh, I hope you recommit in your heart, but perhaps you need to walk down and, and commit publicly. Would you stand as we sing a hymn of commitment? Let's be seated. 